So this is the HD Zero monitor, probably the most exciting release of this year. Yeah. But it's not perfect. It has some things that are a little bit annoying. I actually tell Carl all of my complaints face to face, and we're going to hear the responses on why some of the choices were made directly from him. So stay tuned to that at the end. It's like probably the hero of IO. So many people spotting Wraith yeah. is using this. And 30 of them sold out at IO from Carl directly, like in half day. Yeah, where's yours? Yeah, I didn't get it. Well, mine is uh, some red flight pass. I ordered with uh, $40 one day delivery, and I, then I got an email that they're shipping in one to three days. <laughs> and then I saw on their website that because of the, their flight fast, they're delaying it even more. So what the heck? Well, this <laughs> The HD Zero monitor has 720p 800 nits screen. On one side, it has an SD card slot for DVR recording, USB port for updates, and an HDMI port. The other side has a barrel connector where you can plug your goggle cable into an XT30 AV in and out and a power switch. On the bottom, you have a quarter inch tripod mounting. On the top, two antenna ports, and on the back, two Velcro straps for you to be able to strap on a battery. This is my bench. This is where I do all the building of quads that I race and blow up and repair every single week. This is the perfect complement for any bench or field pack. Now I've heard mixed feelings, mixed reviews. Is this the best product? Is this the worst product? Is it preventatively expensive. Is it too exclusive? This is one of the best products that I've seen all 2024. A must have for any racer or anybody that goes out flying with public that wants to give a ride along. Now let's start out by saying all the things that it can replace. Now for a $175 cost, it is absolutely not cheap. But if you think about the things that it does, here is an analog monitor, FPV monitor that I keep in my pack at all times. And ever since I started racing on HD zero, here's an HD zero monitor. This is the screen that can pop off of the Emax HD zero goggle. This would cost you about $250. This would cost you about 60 to 80 to $90. So grand total, almost 350 to $400 to be able to accommodate viewing HD zero and analog by having two of these. And then you gotta have both of them charged. You gotta have antennas for both. This device replaces both of those for pretty much half the cost. Now we're gonna go over why you need this. The reason you need it as a racer is to be able to spectate all of the other racers, all of your teammates to be able to view what's going on with everyone else in the race, be able to learn their lines. It also has DVR built in so that you can record. I know that a lot of times I wanna be able to keep track of what the competition is doing, or I just wanna be able to get DVR for a YouTube video that I'm gonna do later. Like the Min Chan video in Costa Rica, that DVR I had of him, I was recording with my goggles, but that meant while I'm trying to shoot video with my camera, I also had to be wearing my goggles, recording, remember to hit the record button, remember to hit the stop button, this does it all for you, and you don't have to have your goggles on your head. It powers up super fast. The things that I love though, that override all of those negatives are that it's super portable, super convenient, and super premium. You know, a lot of times, the things that we get in this industry are very hobby grade or slash toy grade. I'm not saying that this is on par with like a DJI or Sony product, but it's definitely nicer than we're used to. So really good job on the fit, finish, design, of all of this. This solves an issue that every racer and every freestyler that flies HD zero or analog or both has. And that's that when you're out on the field, someone comes up to ask what you're doing. Are you guys racing? Are you guys just flying a drone in a park? What are you doing? Well, if the person that's flying while you're talking to someone and being a good ambassador of FPV is flying HD zero, you have no way to show them. If they're flying analog, you have no way to show them. And how many times have you pulled out your little field monitor to show somebody and then realize like, oh, Lamone's over there. He's not flying what I'm flying. So I can't show this poor person what they're doing. And it's just doesn't leave them with a good experience. You always want to be able to be a good ambassador of FPV. And this solves that problem that we all really have. And we can all be a good ambassador of this. The other thing that I really, really love that they did include that I didn't even think I wanted that much is this HDMI out. I took a monitor, like a full-size computer monitor to the field with me, hooked this thing up to that, and I could watch people fly all day long. And then the cool thing is that it actually auto records whenever it detects 
a image either on HD zero or analog. So when I got home, I actually had an SD card full of really cool flight footages of people flying all day, not just myself, but anybody that popped up on the channel that I was tuned into, which was really cool. I could check out Jordil's lines. I could check out Hiroki's lines. One of the cool note is that this screen does 60 Hertz refresh rate or 60 FPS, but it can display the HD 090 camera. So you're going to be able to see the camera just fine. You're just going to see 60 frames per second out of the 90 that it actually transmits. So I don't know if you would actually want to fly off of this. I don't know. You probably wouldn't want to fly off of this anyway. Um, but it's totally spectatable to watch somebody. Uh, I watched a few people flying the 90 FPS camera and it looked totally fine and it DVRs it totally fine as well. Now, what are the cons of this thing? Well, there's no playback on the device. Yes, it does have SD card recording. Yes, you can view all of it later, but you can't tell what you got. So if your goal was to record a competitor flying and then review that multiple times, try to steal their lines and repeat it when you get up and it's your turn you're not gonna be able to do that with this in order to accomplish that you'd have to take the sda card out put it into something else and view it that way you can't view it on here that's kind of a bummer what would it take to have dvr playback is that more money a bigger size oh yes that's one of the one of the design target right before i don't even want to have the dvr but later on, I added the DVR, but didn't add the DVR playback, right. just because for lower cost. Would you would you consider making a version with it? How much would it add? Like thirty dollars, fifty dollars? It won't be thirty dollars, but at least ten dollars more. Okay. So I think I I want to this one as cheap as possible. But yeah. next thing that I don't love is that it doesn't have XT60; it has XT30. But you know you can make yourself a little adapter for about a dollar, so that's not the end of the world. I bet you they did it for size. It is actually pretty compact. I really enjoy the size and the fit and finish of this thing. The next thing that is going to be sort of a downside and a plus side is the fact that there's only two antennas. Space-wise, four antennas would be pretty awkward and not ideal but that does mean that the reception is going to be less than something like the vrx or the hd0 goggle so the recordings that you're going to have on here are always going to be a little bit worse than your goggle now if you're in a racing environment you're always going to be close to where you're flying so your reception is going to be okay but if it's super hot and you're sitting kind of inside of your car behind your car or in a little metal structure you're going to see some of the dvr that i have is not super clean and that's probably because we're only taking in two antenna inputs instead of four third one is that this usb c on here is to really provide updates only i don't think there's any way that you can charge or power the device uh, using that and you also can't use it to transfer the files out so the only way to get the files off of here is to take the sd card out and transfer it somehow that's a little annoying for me because i'm pretty much using like a macbook air as my field laptop for beta flight and stuff that doesn't have an sd card reader it would be awesome if i could just plug the sd card in and pull those clips off but can't do it so that's kind of an annoyance. Right, it's only for updates. Cannot upload the, 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 the video file to PC okay. by USB-C. Yeah, it's also the cost of yeah. considerations. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about the worst thing about this release. And it doesn't have anything to do with Carl or HD0 specifically. It's really a more about the flight test exclusivity to be able to sell this product. You see, no other stores in the world can sell it besides flight test they have an exclusive agreement so you can't get it at 523 you can't get it at get fpv you can't get it at amazon none of these now why does only flight test have they can't have the thing oh yeah that's a tough question so this one and the ecosystem it's a very cost effective i really want to this one can be used for for entry level fpv the price is good right yes, yes. so that's why flight test and they are working for the steam projects yes. i i want to this one can be used for that yeah that's a good idea but i noticed they don't carry many other hp0 products do you think they're going to start having cameras and lenses and vtx's soon i'm not sure about that. i hope they do 
Yeah. They should. They yeah. If you did a nice thing for them, they should help HD Zero too. I'm not blaming Carl on this because Carl's not a business guy. He's told us this many times. He's an engineer. He just wants to design these products for us and hopes that we actually like them. And in this case we really do even though it's not perfect i think he overall hit it out of the park but somehow flight test convinced carl to let them be the exclusive distributor of this and from what i understand it's because they do help something with stem and whatnot which is all fine and good but what we need to be more concerned about is are they helping with hd0 hd0 is in a precarious place and we need them to be able to survive long term for those of us that want to race for those of us that just like that low latency feel for whoops or other crafts or anything else and if we just want another option on the market besides dji we need them to survive and so by flight test being the exclusive distributor you're going to go to flight test you're going to order your monitor but guess what they don't sell any other hd0 products now what would happen if you had it at 533 is you would go in to check it out you would also buy yourself a 90 fps camera you'd buy yourself a race v3 video transmitter you might buy yourself one of these fancy new mobula eco hd0 tiny whoops but guess what flight test doesn't carry any of those so you can't do any of that so they're getting the one sale and it's not helping out hd0 so i'm not going to include the link to flight test below i'm going to include the link that you can buy this directly from hd0 if you do that i'll get a small commission but here's what's going to happen guys flight test i'm going to ask you guys you need to carry the full suite of HD0 products. I'm talking about everything. You need the cameras, the video transmitters, you need some bind and flies, you need some other accessories if you want to keep this exclusive agreement with the monitor. If you're not willing to do that, then please give up the exclusivity so that all the other shops can carry it because those are the ones that are actually selling Carl's other products. Those are the ones that are gonna help HD0 stay in this industry and if you're not willing to do that, then please give up that exclusivity. I'm not blaming Carl on this again at all. I think this is a flight test thing. So flight test, just stock the rest of the HD0 products and make it right. Help keep that system afloat. And if you're not willing to do that, release and relinquish the exclusivity and we'll let bygones be bygones. Other than that, fantastic product. Even with the gripes, this is my favorite release of 2024 so far. Like one of my favorite times of the whole event was watching the World Cup on the sidelines with all you guys. Yep. And we were just all crowded around and watching the thing. And it was just so fun. Seeing the Matt's boobs that Levi did. Read this one. Oh, oh, that was the best man the milk man. Milk man. Milk man. And why are dropping down their <laughs> Like and we wouldn't have been able to do that. We would have been seeing the people line of sight, but like being able to do both and not have your goggles on your head, that was pretty nice. Good Dude, job. Levi was all up in Matt's boobs, wasn't he? God, yeah. like deep. I never seen anybody like on him like that. I'm it's really cool to see a company out there just give us something that we didn't really even know that we wanted for a price that we wouldn't have expected. It's cool to see a company be able to move at a very fast clip and just come out with a couple of new releases every single year. And yes, they might not be all perfect, but you're really getting a lot of community involvement. People are listening to Carl. Carl is listening to the community. Carl is out there talking to anybody that he could at International Open to get their feedback to figure out what he should be doing next. And I love that engagement. I think if you're a racer or a freestyler that's ever going to be out in public. The monitor is mainly designed for for the pilots, for sporting, uh, for bench testing. Yeah, it puts it fast. So was this a fun project or was it like not so fun? Oh no, I, I designed it with my heart. I put a lot of effort on this. I really like it. It's, uh, it's well designed. It feels more like a premium product. Yeah. I, I spend a lot of time on this and on the UI. Yeah, even it's very simple, but I make sure it's very easy to use. This is the new monitor to buy. 175 bucks, it's more expensive than the analog monitors that we've had in the past, but it's less expensive than the HT0 monitors that we've had in the past. And the fact that it does both for less than half the price if you had to buy each of those things separately is actually a really good value. I love that they put this little strappy thing on the back so you can strap a battery onto it. This is basically like a one channel version of the Event VRX system. Portable, affordable. I, I really like it. I think every racer needs one, so good job. Thank you.